I'm Dan Steers from Double Dan Horsemanship, and it's that time of year where we're weaning foals and we're starting to handle them. So I've got some babies in the yards. They've had about, oh, probably about 10 sessions of handling. Um, for the first five sessions, I don't put a halter on them. I actually use a catching rope and I, I get them leading from the catching rope and get them desensitized. And then I put the halter on. So technically, by the time I actually put the halter on, they're already leading. They just haven't had halter pressure. Once we get them leading and, and lunging a little bit, which I'm going to show you, as well as, again, some desensitization, I do tie them up. So we've got some foals scattered around, or, or weanlings, I should say, and they're tied up here and just learning a little bit of uh, patience as well as understanding the pressure of the lead. Uh, I do also put neck collars on my horses, um, which I might show you uh, a little bit later in this clip so that if they do pull back, it disperses the weight uh, and the pressure of the rein across their neck rather than their pole, which I find is really successful in teaching horses to tie up. You only have to do it a few times. And once the horse understands how to come off the pressure, if he does pull back, then I'm comfortable to put him into a halter. So the little filly that I have here, uh, she's actually an RS Chisholm filly out of an acres mare. She's probably the most sensitive out of the bunch. So I thought I'd use her because, um, you know, like I said, she's had 10 sessions or so, but at the same time um, is a little bit reactive. So it might be similar to something that you're handling at home yourself. And, uh, and I'll just go through some of the things that we do with the horse that is a little bit more sensitive um, than the others. With my horses or, or my weanlings, I want to look at them as they're not babies, that they're actually just young horses. So a lot of times when people maybe only breed one or two foals themselves, they tend to spoil them a little bit too much. And then what that means is it actually contradicts yourself when you do go to actually handle them um, with the halter and put them under more pressure. All of a sudden you actually have to re-educate them and, and you... I think you're being quite unfair to them in, in the fact that you've taught them some bad behavior and then you've got to come here and sort of fix it. So for me, them being a little bit more sensitive actually helps me because that's similar to what horses are. I mean, they are flight creatures and animals and, and they're not expected to just accept us straight away. So that sensitivity allows me to work within the horse and, and understanding pressure and release and, and the concept of the principle of training so that I can release as much pressure when I'm getting that correct behavior. So everything that I wanna do, like I said, being that he's a, a young horse, I've gotta set him up for me in the future. When I'm thinking about the next lot of handling that I'm gonna do with these guys, we'll really be breaking them in. So they're gonna get most of their education now in the next probably another week. We do about three weeks with them where they'll tie, they'll get their feet done, they'll, they'll load onto a float, they'll do a few obstacles. And then from then on, it's just management until we start them. So, you know, they'll obviously get their feet done all the way through uh, until we break them in, drenching, things like that. And of course, if they need any doctoring, but other than that, I'm not gonna bring them in and do any uh, specific education. But then when I come to start them, I wanna be able to just basically go ahead and break them in. I don't wanna to have to go and teach them how to lead, how to tie, do all the things that uh, I'm gonna spend the time to teach them now. So knowing that, we can see she's been really good and patient about standing here and she's quite focused. I wanna be able to move her feet and I wanna be able to move her feet in both directions. So I'm gonna pick up my flag here and just see if I can get her just lunging around a little bit. So you can see she's a little bit apprehensive. I just wanna let her feet get a bit of flow. Travel around. And then when I change the direction, I want to be able to yield a hindquarters. So here I'm going to step in and yield a hindquarters away. There, let her stop. So she is really responsive, but in my mind, it's actually a little bit reactive. So I want to be able to continue to work her until she becomes a little bit more relaxed. So she's doing everything that I say, but you can tell she's just a little bit cautious about it. And that's the difference in my mind between responsive and reactive is the relaxation. So if she's reactive, then she's not relaxed. If she's responsive, then I think and I believe she's relaxed. So now when I want her to change direction, I want her shoulders to move away. So here, see her shoulders just stepped away. Then I put my flag behind her and I drive her around. Good. So I'll keep her going. Then what I'll do is I'll step into a hindquarter, take a nose, 
And what I mean by taking a nose is I'll actually put halter pressure on. I don't want it just to be reading my body language. So a lot of times with our horsemanship, we get the horses so in tune to our body language that the horse reads us, but then unfortunately doesn't learn how to respond to the halter. So I need to pull on the halter as much as I can without frightening her, just teaching her how to be responsive so that when I do tie her up and lead her and things like that, she understands what the pull of the halter means. So therefore I wanna be able to take her nose and bend it towards her hindquarter and I wanna see her inside hind foot step up and over her outside hind foot. You'll notice that even when I stop her, I don't just change her direction immediately. I believe that leads them into a bit of anticipation. So they're not reading the cues, they're just reading the pattern. So I've stopped, I've waited, I've shifted my flag to my right hand side. I'm gonna lead a nose out to the left. I just move my flag. And as you can see, she is quite sensitive. So I don't have to do a lot with that flag. And then I just get a stepping around. And while she's going, I'll take her nose, yield a hindquarter, just there until she faces back up again. I'm, I'm not worried either way, whether she was to stay stationary there after she stopped or she's just walked a couple of steps forward, either way is fine to me. I'm not gonna pull her forward and, and I'm not gonna reprimand her for stepping forward. I just want her to just face up and get relaxed. So I'd continue to do that, like I mentioned, until I think the horse is responsive, which means relaxation. And then from there, once I've got those feet under control, I'll go into working on some desensitization. And there, and there is the reason behind the order, making sure that I've got her feet moving first, is in my mind, if I start my desensitization too early, I don't actually get control of the feet. It might look like it because the horse is wanting to become more stationary, but when the horse actually does get a genuine fright, uh, you go to pull on that halter and you won't have any control. So the movement in the horse is the first thing that I wanna get control of. So if these guys hadn't had any handling, th then all I'm worried about is just teaching my horses to, to move around both left and right before I'm worried about anything else. And that's what we've got here. So from there, I'm gonna do a little bit of desensitization with my rope. And what I do for this is I just wanna be able to just nicely swing it up and let it just lay on her. So here, and there is a bit of a technique to it in the fact that you don't want it to land too abruptly that it frightens them. So what, what you've got to practice, and you can do this on your older horses, is just sort of like flick it up with a little bit of momentum, but then slowly let it layer itself or lower itself down onto the horse and, uh, and just get that feel to where, like here it comes up, but then I just help it come down. That feel that doesn't scare them, but it does get them used to it. Okay, the other little handy one that I like to do is actually just leave it on their back and I just wiggle it around. So here I just wiggle it and you can see how this is going to help you when it comes to maybe putting a rug on or later on down the track a saddle pad. There. Good, and just let it just flick around. Everything we do, we want the horse to be balanced on both sides, so I'll do it on this side as well. And the horse is gonna be more comfortable seeing you in front, and that's why I start up here, but ultimately I actually wanna get behind the drive line and see if I can get her desensitized to me being behind this eye. So I'll come and just rub her neck on this side, and I'll do that same deal. I'll just flick that rein up and around, just try to snake it around. And get her used to it. And as we do that, I can just rub. She's just feeling a little bit uncomfortable. She isn't really frightened, but she's a little bit uncomfortable. In fact, you can just see she's just moved a little bit. So I continue to do that. You know, part of your desensitization is that if the horse does get startled, you have to maintain the pressure of your desensitization tool, whether it be the rope, a flag, a stock whip, a tarp, you have to maintain whatever it was that you were doing at that point that was frightening your horse, you have to maintain it until they stop and become relaxed before you take it away. And that could be some of the mistakes we make at home. We do something, we frighten our horse, we blame ourselves for the frightening the horse, so then we stop, but then what we do is we condition the horse to go, oh, when you're scared of things, they stop. 
And so a lot of you is even thinking, and you may be watching this, not really um, having foals or, or weanlings that you handle, but you might just be watching this just to see what we're talking about. That can happen with your own older horses when you ride them. You're in an arena, they see something and it, and it gives them a fright and, and, and your horse gets scared. So then you take it away from them. You go, oh, come on, someone quickly move this and get it out of the way so my horse doesn't get scared or the kids are playing and they frighten your horse. So you yell at the kids to go further away. And what you're doing, and it's not intentional, but you're actually teaching your horse that the correct response is to actually get frightened. So I'm not deliberately trying to frighten her, but if she was to get scared, which she was just a little bit apprehensive with me rubbing her here, I just had to maintain it till she became stationary before I stepped away. Now, ultimately, if my timing is right, I will go in, desensitize her and get out before she actually moves the feet. So then the horse is learning, oh, well, it might be a little apprehensive. I get in there, I rub a little bit. Just before it gets worried enough to leave, I walk away. But if I do stay there too long, it's no big deal. All I'll do then is, like I just said, stay there while the horse is in movement. Once it becomes stationary, then I'll stop whatever it is that I was doing. So it could be even, like this filly hasn't had any jumping. So if I'm going to jump here, she's going to get a little bit of a fright. She's started moving her feet. Now she's stopped, so I can stop. All right. So she's just looking at me and you saw what she did. She put me in front of herself. I started on the side and she moved back to where she could see me, which is fine. But if I was gonna to continue to wanna to desensitize her to say me jumping and I've got my coat on, it's pretty cool here in Tamworth at the moment. Then what I'd wanna do not only is desensitize her to me jumping here in front, but to each side, you know, wanna be behind the eye in front of the shoulder. Then I'd wanna get behind the eye behind the shoulder and even get right behind the mare's tail and be able to jump around there. And all this sort of stuff's going to help you. Um, like I, I was talking about earlier, when it comes time to ride her as she becomes bigger, then she's like, oh, I've already seen a human jump up around me and I'm gonna be able to tolerate that. At the same point, I don't want to over desensitize her. It goes back to what I was again speaking about uh, at the start with having some foals over desensitized and a little bit spoiled. Then all of a sudden, I can't actually get her to move her feet. And that's going to come into trouble when I do go to start her as well. So it's, it is a balancing act. And I quite like this filly. Like, even though that I met, said that she is more sensitive than some of the other horses in here, to me, she's almost the, the right mix because she naturally wants to be quiet. And she will become quiet once we go down that track and we start her and, and she gets in work for a period of time, I believe she'll probably be real quiet. But that little bit of sensitivity is there is gonna really help me and give me the feel that I'm looking for when it comes to like a cow horse or an entertainment horse, a performance horse, that, that I want them to be naturally quiet at the same time I want them to be sensitive. So I'm just gonna just finish up with this and then we're gonna talk a little bit about leg handling. She's only just had her feet picked up a few times. So I'll just demonstrate it like I'll be doing it for the first time. So what I do initially, and you can do this with a secondary rope. If you do use a lead rope that's attached to the halter, you wanna make sure there's plenty of length in it. But I am just gonna slip that between her front leg. And what I'm gonna do is just gonna rub it up and down. And what it does is you can do this with your hand but then I've got to be bent over and I'm going to get a little bit stiff in the back, especially here on a cold summer's, I mean summer, uh, cold winter uh, day in Tamworth. I wish it was summer, that's probably why I was set it. And, uh, and seize up a little bit, plus I'm not going to be able to see how she's reacting to it. So I'd rather do it here where I'm standing. And then what I do is I actually take pressure to it and I just get it to lead it forward first and then I want to put it on the ground. So if she was gonna snatch it back to the ground, I would just persist and I'd keep trying to pick it up. But here, as she gives to that rein, I'll gently put it down. Then I'll maintain a little bit of pressure on it and I'll see if I can just rub her leg without her actually moving it. I don't even want to pick it up. If she reacted by picking her own foot up, I wouldn't grab the foot. I would actually try to put it back on the ground and say, just tolerate it. Most of those horses that pick it up are being reactive, they're not relaxed. So then all of a sudden you grab it and then they go, I didn't realize you were gonna grab my foot and they're gonna get more panicked. So I want her to understand that first and foremost, just let me stroke down your leg and then I'll pick it up just enough to get it out of that rope and then I'll put it back on the ground. 
and see how she's sort of leaving it there. She's got no weight on her heel and, and she's staying relaxed. Even though she hasn't had her feet picked up properly in a, in a, in a position to be able to say trim her feet like a farrier would. She's only actually had a couple of small sessions doing exactly what I'm doing, but I'm building towards that. So here, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna pick it up just enough to take the weight off it. And see there, I'll put it down and then I'll rub it. Okay. I, I love that there as well, where I've left it for a, a moment. She, she hasn't been worried about slamming it down on the ground. She just left it in that real soft position. And we can sort of mimic that here and just put it even on, on the toe of my shoe here. And I'll just put it there. Good. And keep it soft and relaxed. And then I'll pick it up and then I'll put it back down. So the front feet, for a lot of people, are a lot easier than the back feet. The back feet, I actually treat exactly the same. So if I haven't done a lot of handling on them, I'll, I will actually just flick that rope around them while they're moving. But if I'm confident enough that I can actually place the rope there, it's just a lot easier but I'm gonna do exactly the same here and just rub the leg with the rope. And then just take it forward and then put it back down. So here, take it forward, put it back down. And then when I come in to actually pick it up, I'm gonna maintain a little bit of pressure and just see if I can rub down the leg And then I'm going to pick it up and then put it back down. Good. So she's still resting that leg. She hasn't been worried to put it back down. And, and that's all really good signs that she's feeling comfortable about what I'm doing. I know with her, if I grabbed it and I just sat it in my lap like I was going to trim it and started to, you know, be a bit rough with it, she'd just, she'd just jump straight out of my lap and, and go to run off. And then I'm teaching the incorrect response. And it's gonna be a long way back to try to get a trust again. So if I do it slowly and I build a confidence, then I won't have to worry about re-educating her and, and trying to build that trust back up. She's gonna be comfortable. What I've got to think about is I've got to make her ready for a farrier. So if I can eventually get her to the point that I'll even put a little hammer in my hand and I'll, I'll tap away and, and, and I'll, I'll wear an apron, I'll do as much as I can to simulate the farrier, that by the time the farrier comes, he should look like it's the easiest thing that she needs to put up with. So she just goes, oh, you know, I've already done, you know, some, like I, I talked about before, some obstacles. I've had him, I've had my handler, you know, be rough with my feet. I've been tied up. I've done all this other stuff. So that way when the farrier comes in, it's not his job to do the handling. He should be there just to do the feet and be able to, especially with these young horses, you know, if they need any correcting or anything like that, he should just be able to look at the horse and be able to go in there and trim it just like it is an older, well-behaved uh, horse that's you know, had its feet done a thousand times before. Like I've been talking about, you know, I've only just shown you her near side front and her near side hind, but you're gonna do that on, on both sides. So once we have the horse accepting as far as the, the feet handling, we've done a little bit of the lunging, I want to be able to check that she's okay with coming off the pressure of the lead before we go into tying them up, which we have all these guys tied up around us at the moment. She's also been tied up twice, but it's something that I want to check that is if I pull this lead rope, she's going to come forward to it. Even when I lead my horses, which can be different than, than some uh, other people who, who do a fair bit of uh, foal handling, I actually want my horses to lead behind me, so not on the side where you might have got taught. You know, a lot of guys want to get them straight away leading off from here, and as soon as I walk off, I want my horse to walk off with me. From my own experience, and it's not right or wrong, I just find I get into a little bit of trouble by the shoulder. The horses actually become a little bit pushy. And, and I find that I, I don't have the same amount of control, funnily enough, as I do if there's a bit of distance between the horse and myself. So if I can step out here and teach the horse to actually follow me, and then I'll just take some contact to that lead rope, that even though that she's behind me, and if she was to get a fright, you know, she's got a lot of options in which direction she can go, 
just by the position that I am, all I need to be able to do is just get towards the hindquarters. And if I can pull those hindquarters out of the way, then I'm gonna be able to get myself back in control. So that's why I'm comfortable to be in this position because either way I can be on this side and I can step into the hindquarters or if I change directions, I can step into a hindquarters on this side. So the only trick about leading young horses that you might want to remember, and it's something that I sure remember after getting a few rope burns, is if a horse does pull away, that you need, you need hands that open quickly and close slowly. And that's how you prevent your hands from getting burnt. So I do see people wear a lot of gloves with young horses. As soon as they think they're gonna handle them, they're gonna pull away from them. I don't use gloves, but I am wary that if she was to get a fright and pull away, that I'm not gonna just lock down and get in that ski position and get myself dragged and have that rope burn through my hands. I'm actually gonna allow the rope to pull through my hand just enough until I can get enough contact on it and get in the correct position to be able to yield that hind quarter away like we're talking about now stepping in here good girl all right i'm going to just show you the collar and then we're going to give her a little tie up and i think that might just about do her so i've got a pbc uh, neck collar here this actually doubles as a bit of a roller as well we use it for both so I can place that just over her, around her neck. If you, if you don't have a special tie col collar up, because you can buy these uh, at a lot of, a lot of good uh, saddle shops. If you don't have a PVC one, all you need to do is just have a couple of rings, you know, uh, sewn on the ends of them. You can just use a girth that you get from off your, you know, Western saddle or stock saddle. I've, I've got one tied up here. Uh, he's just wearing a, a, a cord girth as, as a collar. Just something that's going to disperse that weight. All right. I'm going to slide my lead rope through the halter so I don't go just to the neck rein, the neck strap, I should say. It goes through the halter and then I'll just clip it on. So this keeps the rope up and in the correct position when she's tied up. So if she was to pull back, it's not going to get low down by her feet, but, but it's not going to pull on the halter. It's actually going to pull on the horse's neck. So if I just bring her over, I'll tie her up with a buddy here. Let's get her to come forward. Good girl. And I'll just sort of rub, just come over, just see if she'll accept me just rubbing on each side. And I want my horses to feel comfortable to move their feet. So a lot of times when you tie up a young horse, so they'll actually stand really stationary. You think, oh, geez, he's tying up well. And then he might even be there, he could even be there for a long period of time. Something startles them and they just flip out. Because they weren't actually relaxed, they were just stiff with fear that we think that they're taking it and accepting it, but the whole time they're just actually scared. So they just need something to bubble over and then they explode. So for my horses, once I have them there, I'm gonna just pick up my flag again, here it is. What I'll do is I'll practice just moving them side to side. And you can do this with your older horses. Like if you have a horse that maybe is like that, that he pulls back, uh, but he might stand there for long periods of time before he actually pulls back, this is what I'll do with him. I'll put him in a safe position as far as a nice safe area to tie him. I'll put the neck collar on him, and then I'm gonna just get him to move his feet from side to side. So here she's accepted me on the near side. I'm gonna walk past her and get on the offside and I want her hind quarter 
to go back around. Good. And then have me on the offside. Okay. So this is only her third time and second day of tying up. So she got tied up once yesterday and she was just tied up here before we started to record our little training clip here. Good. Good. And then I'll go back again. My flag. Good. So there she was a bit more reluctant to move her feet. She got a bit of a startle because I actually physically bumped her with the flag to move her over, but she didn't freak out. You know, she thought about it, moved across. I've got to sort of still understand that I want her to be responsive like an older horse. So I can't be afraid of actually putting pressure on her. I don't want to scare her, but at the same time, she needs to be responsive. So I'll just do it one more time each way and make sure that it's right. That's really good. Steps across. Now I'm going to go straight back in and see if we can bring it back the other way. Much better. Good girl. Good. So hopefully we've been able to give you a few tips when it comes to handling your young horses and maybe even your old horses.